Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Mary and today we're gonna be talking about my spring TBR. I love a good seasonal TBR. I feel like monthly TBRs, they're just a little too chaotic and unrealistic for me because I have a very hard time sticking to them. But seasonal TBRs sound like there's something I can actually stick to. We've got two months left before summer and now it's starting to get a little bit more warmer here in Toronto. So I thought what better way to get excited about this warm weather than to create a TBR of all the books that I feel like are just perfect for the springtime. Now I'm gonna let you guys know that I already recorded this whole entire video an hour ago. And when I was looking back on my footage, I realized I recorded it in slow motion. And I recorded another video after that in slow motion and a video before that in slow motion. So if I sound like I am rushing or I'm talking fast, it's because I've already said this all once, but I can't fix that slow motion because it doesn't record the audio. So here we are. <laughs> I've got 10 books here on my spring TBR, I believe in five different genres. So because I'm such a mood reader, hopefully I will have a mood to pick up all of these books in the months to come. But without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna go from top to bottom, which is funny because I think I actually said it from bottom up <laughs> when I recorded it the first time. But the first two are classics and the first one is A Room with a View by E.M. Forster. This book I've been told, actually both of these books I've been told to read in the springtime and this one I've tried reading a couple times and just couldn't get into it so I'm really hoping I can get into it this time. It's very small, we'll see how it goes but I am very hopeful that the third time around I will actually read it in its entirety but I think I've only gotten yeah, 40 pages and I, <laughs> I have a bookmark in here. So I'm hoping and praying that I'll actually get into it and enjoy it because I've only heard fantastic things. The next book I have is Miss Middlemarch by George Eliot. This one again, um, I've been told to read in the springtime, I believe. The first installment of this was released in the springtime. Yeah, it was released serialized, so you didn't get it all at once and I believe it started in the springtime. So that's why I want to read it now. It is a hunk of a book and I've heard that the first 200 pages are the hardest to get through but then after that you're really engrossed into the story. So I actually also got the hold of the audiobook on Libby so I'm hoping that that will help me get through this book. The next two books here are non-fictions and I don't read non-fictions that often. I actually used to be such a big non-fiction girly and then kind of moved on from the genre. I have so many non-fictions that I want to read and so these two uh, I'm really excited to read and I feel like it's the perfect time to read them. So the first one is a book that's called It's Okay That You're Not Okay and then this is a grief book. Um, if you're new here, I've talked about it a few times but I did lose my dad in the springtime um, six years ago next week. The first year of my dad's passing, I kind of jumped into a lot of grief books but I felt like it was just a little too early to open up that wound that wasn't really healed yet and now I'm kind of feeling ready to get back into it and kind of get back on that healing journey. I heard fantastic things about this book, recently ordered it, and now I'm excited to get into it. I'll probably be starting this this week with his anniversary coming up, but yeah, I'm excited for this one. Excited might not be the best word because it's probably going to be very hard and sad to read, but also something very valuable and I'm sure I will learn a lot and hopefully heal a little bit more. The next book I have here is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. This book is all about indigenous wisdom, scientific knowledge, and the teachings of plants, all about Miss Mother Nature. Is springtime not the perfect time to read any book about nature? And this is a book written by a botanist, I believe, and I am so thrilled and excited to read this. I've only heard fantastic things. It's also on my 24 in 2024, so you know so many reasons to read this why not read it the next two books i have are kind of i said they're in the romance genre but i'm not sure this one might be a mix of romance and maybe mystery but it's the wisteria society of lady scoundrels so this first of all this cover just looks like spring why would you not want to read this i've only heard wonderful things about this i've heard it's funny oh my god spice 
My cat's trying to get into some food. I don't know, I've been waiting to read this for some reason and you know, when I was thinking about my TBR and looking at my shelves and I saw this book, I was like instantly, you're coming on this list, you look like spring, you gotta come. So I'm excited to read this. I'm gonna read you like the little summary here. It says, a prim and proper lady thief must save her aunt from a crazed pirate and his dangerously charming henchman in this fantastical historical romance. So there you go, romance, but Feel like it might be also a little bit of like a mystery action. The second romance book we've got is The Sweetest Revenge by Lizzie Dent. Now I've read one Lizzie Dent book before which is the setup. I read that a couple months ago. Wasn't my favorite. I think I gave it a two and a half stars. I wasn't a fan of the characters. The writing felt a little bit naive and there was a lot just mm, I did not like it. The character growth wasn't there. I wasn't really rooting for the romance. It was cute, but it wasn't like, it wasn't funny story. That's for sure. I just finished funny story and that book was probably five stars. This cover just spoke to me though. I actually wanted to read this before the setup, but I don't know. I read the setup first. And so I thought this might be fun. It says her past is a mess, but her present is about to get delicious. I think it might be fake dating, but I might be wrong. So we'll see. The next two books I have here are fantasy. So the first one is The Wicked King by Holly Black, which is the second book in the Cruel Prince trilogy. I actually tried starting this, I think a month ago and I couldn't get into it, but I'm feeling more back into the fantasy genre. I just felt like at that time I wasn't really into it, but now it's kind of the feelings of wanting to read fantasy are coming back again. And so I really want to get into the rest of the Cruel Prince trilogy. The Cruel Prince I gave two, no, I gave it three stars. Didn't love it, didn't hate it, very neutral feelings about it, but I've heard the series gets better. So I also own the whole series, so why not read it? And then the second fantasy I have is Belladonna. And this cover again just screams spring because of all the floral. But I've heard really great things about this as well. And one of my friends has been begging me to read it. So added this on this list. I actually have the second book, Foxglove, as well. So I gotta get to it. You know, they're just collecting dust here. I mean, all of my books are collecting dust here, but some of them have special dust because I've actually read them. <laughs> then the last two books, I've kind of categorized it in general fiction, but they're really not anything close to each other. The first one is the Kamogawa Food Detectives. Now my boyfriend bought me this book because, I don't know, he loves buying the Japanese authors um, with books that have to do with cats. And I don't even know if this has to do with cats. I don't believe it it does. It is kind of like the same concept of before the coffee gets cold, but this one is like food related where like they can make a meal that brings back memories. Yeah, I'm excited to read this and I've been meaning to read it and kind of putting, I don't want to say putting it off, but I just haven't been picking it up. It's It was just feeling like it's time to pick it up. And lastly, the last book I have on my TBR is Demon Copperhead. This is also on my 24 in 2024. I really wanted to pick this up because last year I read David Copperfield in the springtime and absolutely adored that book. And once I finished that book and learned about Demon Copperhead, I picked this one up right away, but I haven't read it because I wanted to give some time between reading them because, I mean, this is like a retelling or loosely based off of David Copperfield. So um, if the stories are very similar, I just didn't want to read the same story back to back. So hopefully this will be really, really good. I love David Copperfield. So I'm really hoping that I'm going to love Demon Copperhead and I've heard really good things about it. So these are all the books on my spring TBR. Let me know if you want to see any reading vlogs with these books included in them. I will try doing that before the summertime and let me know if you've read any of these books as well and what you thought about them. I'm so excited. Let me know also. <laughs> I want you to let me know a lot of things in the comments down below but let me know what is on your spring TBR and what's on your radar to read this season. Thank you all for watching and spending this time with me. If you've liked this video please like and subscribe. It really means a lot to me and I hope to see you all in my next video. Bye! Lazy Sunday mornings hiding under covers I don't mind staying in with you Play your favorite movie laying right beside me I don't mind when it's just us